Okay, so I got a deck made just in case, though I might have to remake it if she get if the cat gets freaking ground fighting. But um, in any case, um, I need to actually do some changes because I screwed up. I know it's I blame it because I'm rushing because I am trying to get this done today. Um, so first of all, um, we a while back we got the family innovation, and I didn't add the consequences to the deck. So uh, what the family consequences are is, uh, let's pull that up, innovations, family, that gets us access to Clan of Death, which is pretty neat. So Clan of Death, we'll add that. All right, so with that knowledge in mind, I'm going to go ahead and redo both innovations. I won't do anything with them, but I'll redo both of them. For the most part, it won't make too much of a difference, but this is just in case. All right, so this is going to be the innovation from a year ago. So it's a uh, ten cards, so forty ten. Three, um, so three is partnership. Five is cooking. Seven is records, and nine is plan of death. Go figure. Um, I will just get cooking, and that'll give us plus one. I I miss out on bloodletting, but that's fine. Um, and then we will go ahead and do a forty-nine for this year's innovation, which is going to be one, which is scrap smelting. Um, six, which is scarification. Seven, which is records, and nine, which is clan of death. So we're not getting pottery, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the reason I had to do this is because that does influence the deck itself, and I had to make sure. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get uh, access to the um, to pottery, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Um, for the most part, I don't really care which what we get at this point. So let's zoom in a bit, and we'll see what we can grab. Scarification can get us not, um, nothing that great, to be honest. Uh, records. I guess records would be probably the most interesting one. Wait, records would be the most the best one. We're grabbing records. If we get a natural 10 with records, uh, we can set Flanders uh, experience to zero. So we will grab records. Uh, we could have grabbed Clan of Death. Uh, Clan of Death gives you make sure all your newborn survivors get plus one accuracy, plus one um, uh, strength, and plus one evasion, which is extremely powerful. That's three stat increases. Which essentially means, and with on top of the freaking barbaric, that would be two strength. That would be four stat increases for just a newborn. Um, but just it's so late in the game that it's not really going to help us. So I'm just not going to use it. Um, we still get the same. We still have the same survival limit. Um, technically, we would have had a, the eight survival limit on the previous encounter, but that's completely fine. But yeah, um, the group I play with uh, for like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, um, they're Settlement got Clan of Death rather early, and so every newborn character they've been getting is, um, like, plus, yeah, it's, it's plus two strength and all that nonsense because they have uh, Survival of the Fittest, so it's pretty crazy. Anyway, um, with that said and done, let's go ahead and go on our hunt, because I have all that prepared now. So, yeah, apologize for all the mistakes. I always make them. Hopefully in the future I'll do better. All right, so 1d8. The usual stuff again, so six. I believe that's the tall grass again. Yep, six is. Oh no, six is scratching ground. Um, I'll have. Uh, sure, I'll start having these people search their uh, search for some light, some lion resources. So Yukari, go ahead and search. Uh, nothing happens. Takes one. Well, takes one damage to the arms. So that's fine. Next is. Uh, next is Konika. Konika will roll 1d10. 
Um, she gets nothing but plus one courage. Uh, Ryson. Plus one courage. And Menorico. Yeah, we can do Menorico. Menorico. Uh, you do find a Lion Claw. Congratulations. Okay, takes care of that. Every little bit helps. Alright, so we'll go ahead and update this nonsense. Plus an eight. There we go. And let's grab that line resource. Because who knows, maybe we'll actually use it. I did look up some of the stuff for like what it would take to work with like a blacksmith. That's that getting completing a full set of what you can get from the lantern or not from the lantern the uh blacksmith is practically a campaign in itself so i don't i we're definitely not doing this playthrough it might be something to try in the future though five five is prowling lion it goes back one space and ha i have to change the deck great thanks all right next is ricin uh this time we are going to have to deal with 1d100s that's completely fine. 14. The uh, the blacksmith does have the ultimate weapon that you can get. If you have, like that key we've gotten, that can get us a piece of, uh, get us a component that could be used for the, essentially the legendary sword or something like that that you can craft. Um, of course, there's a 10% chance that if you attempt that, you will get everyone killed, but uh, it's definitely pretty interesting. Chance encounter. The survivors encounter a bewitching uh, barefoot waif. If all survivors are insane, doesn't matter. We're not insane. Uh, otherwise, exclaiming wildly at the survivors, the survivors' presence fills everyone with um, the alien feeling of hope. <laughs> the alien feeling of hope. Um, all survivors gain plus one courage and plus one understanding. All injuries are healed. Um, in addition, if the survivors at Innovative Symposium, she insists on that she will accompany them on their hunt. A random survivor starts the sh uh, next showdown with plus one accuracy token. Okay, so yeah, everyone's going to get some stuff from that. Courage, understanding. Uh, courage, understanding. This does trigger bold for um, Kanako. Bryson also gets bold. And Minariko just gets that. Um, I'll roll a 1d4, to, uh, top from bottom, or top to, to bottom, and see who gets the accuracy token. It goes to Yukari, so Yukari is going to get a plus one accuracy token. Um, and that is it for all of that. So let's go ahead and roll for um, Kanako's bold first. So 1d10 for her. That is a natural 10. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, plus one permanent movement. So she has six movement. It's not often that we see that. All right. Um, and then for Ryson. She gets a uh, plus one speed token for next showdown, which doesn't really do anything for her because I don't intend on attacking with her, but she gets that. Okay, and that is it for that. So next we need to do um, Shizua. That's Shizua, not Manorika. Let me switch that. Doop -ba -doop -ba -doop. I was using freaking, the I got the freaking icons mixed up. Here we go. That's what I get. For, that's what I get for getting you know the sisters together. All right, so one d one hundred sixty nine. Insert jokes here. All right. Load, load, load. Scroll. Load, load, load. Sixty nine. Time lapse. Uh, survivors experience a blinding pressure in their skulls. Roll one, uh, on the table. Okay. This is slightly annoying. Um, 1d10. 3. Uh, the survivors are dragged into the past. Move one space back on the hunt table and roll hunt, uh, and roll hunt table events for this next space as normal. If this is the first hunt event space, nothing happens. Okay, so we go back a step. Like so, and then we'll and then we will send in um, Yukari for the last one. Then, so we do the hunt. We do another hunt event. 
22. Load, load, load. 22. Acid rain. Um, yeah, that's all that is. The darkness above is suddenly alight with a storm of acid rain. It smells terrible, burns flesh, and begins to hit, form hissing pools and upturned mouths of stone faces. All survivors suffer one event damage to every hit location as they scramble to find shelter. Imagine getting that in the freaking first year. In fact, I think I did want at one point. Anyway. Yay for shields. Alright. And that is it. Now we could go ahead and go to the, the freaking hunt. Give me more minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and fix this. Oh, good. It's convenient. All I have to do is shuffle the deck. That saves me some trouble. Um, it does start with ground fighting, so there's that. As long as I hit with the arrow, it shouldn't matter. That's pretty funny if you get ambushed when something has a ground fighting already active, because it just doesn't do anything. All right, something like that, and like that, and then put that back. Okay, ground fighting is active, and let's go ahead and get the grass in, and roll 2d21. 11 and 17. Eleven is the breaths, or debris. Seventeen is an aura vein. We never did any of the gathering, by the way. Um... If, if you want to go for blacksmithing and stuff, generally getting pickaxes and, you know, devoting those to, um... In fact, that's something you could do with your spare resources, just make a bunch of pickaxes so you could just keep chiseling away at stuff. Um, and potentially getting more iron, which you can use for blacksmithing, or possibly the Phoenix set. Uh, the Phoenix set requires one iron, if I recall. It's also used in other sets if you're playing the expansions. Alright. Uh, it has to be adjacent to any board edge. We'll put it there. Orvain has to be six spaces away from all other terrain, which is going to be somewhere else. Uh, cat will go here. Oh, right. It's, um... Actually, it's ground fighting, so let's just go ahead and handle this right now. I'll have, um, someone roll 1d10 to search this. That's a two. Nothing. So we go ahead and get rid of the Orvain. Uh, for the debris, I'll go ahead and roll 1d10 for that. Uh, we get a scrap sword. That is awesome. We now have a second scrap sword. Um, I'll do that with a person that actually has an open slot. So, there we go. Paste. Awesome. So now we have a second scrap sword. Getting, a scrap, getting that really early is so helpful, by the way. Because scrap swords are amazing. Uh, especially if you can get two of them and get a uh, blood paint. Speaking of blood paint, we still need more organs. Alright, um, and that is it for that. So all we have to do is just get situated how we want, and go from there. So, where is, uh, oh, there's Yukari. Okay. So with that said and done, let's, um, we don't even need a ranged weapon for this, because we have two characters that have reach. So we can do something like that. That. Yeah, that works. Just something like that, I guess. Alright, so we can have Yukari there. Um, Minoriko right here. Ryson could be here. And Kana could be there. Conoco's got the guitars. Okay. Alright, so yeah, the reason we were able to clear out everything is because ground fighting's in play and the monster will not act until we either act next to it or um, provoke it through other means, like attacking it. So, let's go ahead and get this started. 1d10 for Ryson. She hits on 6s. So that's a hit, so that does give the minus 1 uh, evasion because of the arrow. Sorry if I wasn't clear about the, the fact that I was firing the arrow. Alright, uh, 1d22, or 1d23, sorry. 
20. That is the main, that's the, uh, the main, which is indestructible. Yep, it's just the main. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll 1d10 to see if I crit. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. No crit. Okay, so nothing too serious there. So there goes 20. Um, that also means we didn't actually wound the cats, which is a little annoying. Also, I should have, um, I should have frenzied first. That's my bad. So, not a big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and... Let's see, Ryson has plus one strength, right? Yep. So I'll tell you what, for this, I I will go ahead and... No, that's it. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to risk Ryson. Ryson, she's kind of going to get herself killed at this rate. So instead, I'm going to attack with Yukari. So 2d10 hits on fours now. Two hits. Uh, 16 and 18. Okay. Both of these are annoying. Uh, we'll go for the gut first. So this is 1d10 plus 3 for the weapon, 2 for the necklace, plus 1 for her strength. So 6 in total. That's a wound, not a crit though. Uh, this does put ground fighting back uh, out of play. Just put her there. Okay, and then next attack is just barely a wound to the temple. So now it's down to eight cards left. And then I will go ahead and have Menorico uh, attack. Actually, screw it. Y Yukari, go ahead and surge. 1d10. Uh, she doesn't keep the point. Also, Yukari has plus one accuracy, so she actually hit, she was going to hit on threes. So, 2d10, hit on threes, uh, two hits, 2d23, uh, 14 and 6. 14 and 6. Uh, there is 14, there is 6. Both of these are annoying. Let's go for elbow first. 1d10 plus um, 6. And of course I failed it. Uh, yeah, I'll just let him go through. Alright, so it's just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and move away. I'll go ahead and have Kanako move up. 1, 2, 3, 4. And attack uh, 4 times. She hits on 5s. Uh, two hits, one of them perfect, not that it matters. 2d23, uh, alright, 15 and 23. 15 is the tail, and 23 is the hand. I'll go for the tail first to cancel the reaction, because she is using Katars. Uh, 1d10 plus 4. Yep, only plus 4. That's a fail, but cancels the reaction. And the next attack is just barely a wound. Okay. It's one of the few times we are actually using characters that don't have a million strength. Okay. Um, and I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, we'll go ahead and search. So, Kanako, use your uh, survival point. There you go. And make four attacks again. 40, 10, hit on fives. Uh, one hit. 1d23. Uh, 14's been done. 23 has been done. Four has not been done. Four's the chest. One, two, ten plus four. Uh, not a wound. All right. One, two, three, four. And for Konako, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spend a survival point to dash and bring her back. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. And that's pretty much it. Not very many wounds. We only did... Looks like we only did three wounds. <laughs> Is that right? We only did three wounds. That can't be right. Let me look. We wounded with that, wounded with that, failed to wound, 
then we failed a wound, then we wounded, and then failed. Okay, yeah, that's three wounds. Alright, so that means it's the cat's turn. Cat gets grasp. Uh, closest survivor in range, closest survivor, blah blah blah. All it's going to do is sniff, because nothing is in range. So, there you go. And does this actually do anything besides that? Uh, all, th all survivors are now threats. Doesn't matter. Okay. Good to know. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and just wait. Um, I'll fall back again. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll draw another AI card. We get battle round is for the next card. Uh, this does have closest threats in field of in field of view, which is everybody. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I brought them a little bit closer. Okay. Anyway, with all that said and done, let's uh, see what we can do next. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move up and attack now. So one, two, three, four, five. Actually, one, two, three, eh, that's fine. We'll go with this. 2d10, it's on threes, two hits, 2d23, uh, we're going to hit the trap card eventually. Uh, 11 is good, 4 is not, 20 is not, 12 is good, 11 and 12. Uh, Paw is going to be an issue. Anyway, 1d10 plus 6. That's a wound to the maw. Next is the paw. That is a critical hit to the paw. Um, it now, we now ignore the effects of grab, which is actually pretty nice. Um, it also gets minus one movement. So now it moves only five. And we also get a lion claw out of, out of, the, out of all of that. So we'll just add 9 to that, um, and with that we have done a total of, that was 2 wounds, right? That was 2 wounds, so it should be up to 5 wounds in total. Yep. There you go, there you go. Good stuff. Alright, uh, I will go ahead and have Yukari um, attempt to surge. So 1d10, doesn't keep the point. Make two more attacks. 2d10, uh, only one hit. 1d23, and that is the trap card. That was bound to happen. So we already know what the trap card is. So 2d10, uh, both hit. Uh, that is waist and arms. There you go. That is pretty much all she can do. I'm going to go ahead and have her dash, so I'll see if she keeps the point. Doom wears off at the end of the attack, so that's fine. And she lost another point. Not a big deal. And we'll just move you out of the way. Alright. Next, I will have Menorico move up. This is now with a fresh deck, with the exception of whatever the paw that we ripped off was. Yeah, it was 12. Alright. So... 12. Alright, there we go. Also, let's not forget about the Lion Claw we just got. Good stuff. Alright, um, so at this point, uh, I'll have Menorico attack. 2d10 hits on 5s. Both missed. And I'm going to go ahead and have her uh, dash to get away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that was Menorico's dash. And we will go ahead and move uh, Kaneko up. And Ryzen, you can just hang out. I could be like checking the top three cards and all that nonsense, but I don't really care. <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal anymore. Uh, at least for this fight. 
Next card is size up. Okay. Um, we'll go top to bottom, I guess. So, Ryzen is two, Conoco is three. Three, that is Conoco. So, let's see if uh, she gets knocked down and all that nonsense. Uh, she does, so Conoco is going to take one brain damage. Also, she should have gotten two insanity from, uh, Actually, she did. I think I already noted that from the mask. Okay, um, she does get knocked down. Uh, I'll just have Ryzen shatter back up. Not a big deal. Okay, problem solved. And now it's our turn. So Ryzen shouts Kanako back up. I've already spent the point. And uh, Yukari, go ahead and do your thing. 2d10. Both hit. 2d23. 11 and 19. Nineteen is the groin, eleven is the maw. Uh, we will go for the groin first. One d ten, one d ten plus six. Uh, that's just a wound, so no knocking off the balls. And then for the maw, that's also a wound. I'll go ahead and shuffle the deck, and then remove the top card. Okay. Uh, next I'll have Yukari surge. So let's see if she uses our point. Okay, 2d10, both missed, go figure. Um, and then I will go ahead and have Kanako move up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and attack five, uh, 4 times, hits on 6s, 2 hits, 2d23, 4 and 17. Uh, let's ignore, we'll, we'll go for the chest first, even though we can't suffer grab anymore. Uh, 1d10 plus 4. That is a wound. Next is the tricep, which is also a wound. Okay, good stuff. I'll go ahead and have uh, uh, Menorico move up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make two attacks. There's a cat on my desk. And now she's in front of my screen. <laughs> Get off, Annie. <laughs> Alright, uh, one hit. 1d23. That is an 8. It's only got one card left, so we're almost there. I'm just going to go ahead and roll right now. So this is... This thing has, what, 4 strength? Yeah, 4 strength, so 5 in total. Actually, why am I not using the Scrap Sword? Eh, whatever. It's not that big of a difference. Okay, uh, 1d10 plus 5, and that is a wound to whatever the uh, 8 is. 8 is the flank. It makes her priority target. I'll make it a little pink dot. There you go. Okay, um, with that said and done, I'll go ahead and surge with Kaneko. And attack 4 times again. No cards left, so I just need to do a wound. So 40 10 hits on sixes, uh, two hits, 2d23, uh, three and 14. Okay, three and 14. Three is the brow, 14 is the scapular deltoid. I'll go for the deltoid first because so I can so I can cancel the uh, reaction. And that's a wound. All right, and that ends the fight. So, uh, Yukari is going to get four experience and level up. Kanako is going to get experience point and level up. Rice is going to experience point and level up. And Minoriko is going to get one experience point. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll for the tables for them. So two d ten for um, Yukari. Two uh, d ten for Kanako. And two d ten for Rice. Okay, that's some interesting rolls. All right, so Yukari rolled what a four? Uh, yep, four, and Kanako rolled a five, so both of them get plus one strength. So there you go, there you go, 
And Bryson got an 18, which is plus one accuracy. She's following in, following in Rumia's footsteps. Good for her. Okay, and that is it for that. So let's go ahead and roll for loots. 40, 19, we roll 8s and 9s. And obviously duplicates. Um, dupe, dupe. So... Resources, Curious Hand. Uh, Curious Hand gives a uh, random survivor one uh, one insanity. Uh, I will just set it up like this and do left to right. 1d4. Uh, Minarico gets one insanity. Now she's insane. Okay. Uh, next is 2. 2 is the Eye of the Cat. Great, we need more organs. Um, then 11 and 4. 4 is a great cat bone, and 11 is a tail. We can probably make a full leather set, which will be kind of nice. I think that's probably viable. Alright, um, besides all of that, let's go ahead and roll 4021 and get our standard resources. Oh, okay. Boop, boop, and boop. One is a Broken Lantern, because you know we need more of those. Uh, four is a Love Juice, which we'll definitely use that for something. And six and seven are both Monster Bones. Alright, so that is pretty much it for the year. Bit of a longer video, but I think that's also because we've been combining all of our phases into one. But that's completely okay. Hopefully you guys don't mind it. Because really, like I said, I'm just rushing to the end. Because there's not really... Development-wise, there's not too much we can really go for. I mean, we could go for the Phoenix. If we beat the Phoenix, we do get a, um, a structure. Which can be used for um, building Phoenix gear. But Phoenix also does a lot of things like manipulating ages and stuff like that. And really a lot of our build ended up turning it. I was originally doing a build that's like all about a lot of population. And then I kind of switched over to focusing on key characters to try to get uh, masteries. And masteries are okay. They're not the best thing in the world, but um, they're definitely pretty interesting. I mean, the being, being able to cancel, having all my characters be able to cancel reactions with Katars is actually pretty amazing. That's something I've never really considered before. Because usually I always get, like, you know, one of every set. If I had an entire party that had Katars, that would just mean every character can negate at least one reaction per attack. You know, with the exception of the trap card. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. Uh, Depress Dior, Kingdom Death Monster. When we come back, we will start year 19 and possibly get murdered by the Butcher. See you guys later.